Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. It's been a while since I've done a report, but I've been away, the weather hasn't been behaving, but now the sun has come out. And since a few days ago, today is the 19th of April, and every farm in the UK is basically flat out, making the most, finally, of a dry spell. We've still got an annoying wind, but that's dying down a little bit and we can get on spraying and things. That's the trouble with wind. In this video, I'm going to have a look at the wheat and compare the direct drilled wheat we did in October with the Claydon drill and just see if I can see a difference. Discuss what's going on with this wheat. There's a big issue with it. And also go into the report, the National Food Security Report that I didn't actually know existed, but I heard, I was listening to Radio 4 Today program and a Henry Dimbleby was on discussing food security and food supply. And it just twigged my interest because he said at the moment, food is responsible for 20 to 30% of UK's greenhouse gases, but by 2050, food production will be 50%. I said, what? So I've downloaded the report and I'm going to go through some comments on that because it's, yeah, it's eye-opening what this report contained. But first of all, let's have a look at this wheat. Well, it's grown away. It's been quite a while with this direct drilled wheat getting away. And if you look that way, it's fairly even. We have a little bit of rabbit damage up there. It always looks a slightly odd colour when you're looking into the sun. It's not quite as green as that. But there's a major issue, and I can sort of see it there. I'll show you a bit closer. If I look at here, we have a weed issue. This field grows sterile brome anyway, but we normally get quite a good control of it by the residual herbicides we put on pre-emergent. So that's you put the crop in in October and straight away you spray on this special expensive herbicide that controls a lot of the weeds and including grass weeds as these are called. But this year so much rain has fallen that herbicide has broken down and the grass weeds here have got away and we're actually coming in to spray this in about an hour's time to try and get control of this but that's really annoying because I spent a lot of money on a herbicide so I didn't have that issue and I've got that issue and if you see look at the wheat if I pick a plant up there we are that's where we are so that was the direct drilled wheat there it's you can see we're at stem extension we've had the two lots of fertilizer and i'm quite chuffed that i've grown this dorsum wheat and there's a little bit of septoria but basically the wheat there's no horrid rust coming in it doesn't didn't get scorched from the fertilizer that's a pretty healthy plant if we look at the biggest tiller that's that's i'm not going to cut this one open but yeah that's well on its way that stem extension and yeah it's got we know it's got the moisture it's had the nitrogen both lots had to be on by the end of march we just got in there and uh, this is yeah lapping up this sunshine now let's have a look next door because this is the direct drilled and next door is the claydon drilled i want to compare the two okay now this is the claydon drilled and you can sort of see the slight difference if you look down the road they're sort of wider space because the coulter rather than putting a slot in as the direct drill does and putting the seed precisely there all in a neat row there's a sort of a, a tine with a foot on it and the seed is spread so the actual row is spread out it's not a sharp line and it's you can see it there what you can also see yeah if you look here Look at the amount of grass weeds I've got coming up here in between the rows. Oh, nightmare this year, but that is a consequence of the really wet weather and the herbicide just breaking down in the soil and they've just got away. So we're going to have to treat those with what we call a contact herbicide rather than residual. And I say we're coming in here this afternoon. Let's have a look at how different it looks here. If I just take a random bit from here, see if it's any different. I get that. Oh. Oh, let's pull that out. There we go. So drilled on the same day. Uh, is that about there? I think it. No, there's very little difference. So the direct drilled wheat didn't look so good for quite some time, but now they're just starting to even up. So yeah, it's taken the nitrogen up, and now it's even Stevens. I would say between the two. 
So the next thing is, well, what's the combine going to say? But I'm pretty shocked with this. It's um, a good crop of wheat. It's been a really tricky season. And the other thing is the price carries on rising on wheat. I'm going to be selling, if you're selling wheat today compared to, say, later in the year, this harvested, it's £23 more. So I'm afraid I can see food inflation coming back because that is about, it's 170 now, so what is it, about 15% higher than wheat price for this harvested wheat than what it is now. That will get translated into everything, you know, chickens, dairy, everything, because wheat has gone up 15% year on year because there's less in the ground. It's been a tough season and there's going to be less yield as a result. I think we ought to head back to the other farm and I'll go into details on this food strategy document. I took another sample of wheat just on the way up here because we've got a, a one field that looks very good and I'm just looking at the, if there's any difference they're, they're all drilled within two or three days of each other and this is the final one it's just a little bit taller isn't it than the other ones if I, I've got a knife with me I ought to cut one of these open and you can sort of see how far if I pick and then you can just see what's going on so these bottom leaves a little bit that's septoria you can just see some spots on it I don't know if that will focus on that but yeah that's what that is that's and that's spread by a rain splash and we've had a lot of rain splash this year so yeah these are the main leaves these are the ones that we want to keep healthy and because they're going to pack in the yield for the ear which i should have brought a better knife but never mind we'll get by how far up are we i would have thought we're about there there it is so yeah that's the stage play these are nodes you can see them they sort of extend think of a sort of telescope how you pull it out and that there is the is the ear is developing here i haven't done a very good job but you can just about make it out there that will be the ear on the wheat plant once it's out so that's that's where it is at the moment and then it'll go into boot and appear probably um, end of may june time so that's what's going on with the wheat. And as I say, cattle are back out. This is a suckler herd and they're very happy. They've got the calves at foot. So the calves are suckling off the mums. That's how that all works. And we rotate them round. And they're an integral part of the farm because I do have about 80 acres of grass. If you look down there, that bank there, you can't operate machinery on there's no i haven't got a choice i have to graze this land because it's just too steep for arable operations so and that's what we do and that it's always been that way up here and it's actually it's all soil certified so soil association have gone through this is all organic ground all the way through here this is organic herd of beef it's probably time now just to just start discussing this national food strategy document that was done by Henry Dimby and there was a part one and part two and part one was all done in during lockdown how they were going to get through lockdown and keep the food supply there and then part two was a was a major document looking all the way forward how can we change our food strategy how can we get food secure in the UK what do we need do we need to change our diet with greening and how they're going to hit net zero and this is where I got interested because of this 50% figure coming from agriculture by 2035. I'm not going to go into full detail and full debrief but that 50% came about because they are presuming that we will be driving around in electric cars and we'll have all our gas boilers replaced and um, also the electricity production in the UK by then will be much cleaner much more from renewables and that leaves agriculture badly exposed and that's going to be the main issue so what do they want to do well they're coming at it in two ways because they're also saying there's a cost to the nation at the moment because the mass population is not enjoying a great diet there is an obesity problem in the UK and they want to tackle that as well as excess in their view co2 emissions or greenhouse gas emissions and so they want to change the diet and move it away from meat 
and make it more plant-based. And then you, I start looking at this thing, what, what? There's a couple of things they um, are really looking at, and that is they, they say that the amount of land that is feeding livestock to produce food is 85% of all our grounds. And they want, that's just too much. It's too inefficient use of land. They want us to be growing more pulses and vegetables at which point I say, hang on a minute, if you really know about farming, and I checked who was the advisors, and NFU were involved, they're on the main board, there is, we all want, farmers would love to grow more pulses, because that's a break crop at the moment, we're very limited on break crops. We have oilseed rape, but that's, we're having issues with that, cabbage stem flea beetle, that's why I've stopped growing it, and other issues, just unreliable crop. Peas and beans, even more unreliable and the prices don't really support it you're only growing them because then you'll get a good first wheat as I've discussed many times on Harry's farm after your break crop I tried linseed and I had a great looking crop and then there was no yield there so that's unreliable so that is actually why this farm I entered this new stewardship agreement to get rid of break crops. And here's this national food strategy document saying, I you know you should be growing more pulses and vegetables. Well, thank you. I'm not gonna go into vegetables and no sane farmer would go into vegetables. It is proving an utter nightmare, vegetable production. It always was an extremely expensive, high capital type of agriculture and you had to be on the right ground you can't have stony brash like this and grow carrots and potatoes and things although my mate mr clarkson up the road is trying to prove us that you can grow potatoes on stony ground i beg to differ but i also can't grow vegetables because of the steepness of the ground there's just no way so that is a non-starter now there are areas that can grow uh, more vegetables but they would have done it already but what's putting them off is the power of the supermarket and their standards means you just can't make money from it and they are in a desperate situation in here in 2024 because of energy prices because of labor issues because of the low prices by supermarkets so vegetables every farmer will just run a mile from the idea of it pulses I've discussed I want I'd love to grow soya I'd love to grow different sort of um, chickpeas or whatever but they're not suitable for our climate and we haven't got the varieties and they're too unreliable I can't run a business if I've got this high risk crop that doesn't actually get much money and I can't make a profit from it that's just financial suicide so that's why I've gone into this scheme where we've massively reduced the amount of break crops and food we produce alongside a lot of other farmers. This is the countryside stewardship in my case. There is this SFI um, scheme as well. And it means, I was looking at what I grew, 2021, I was about 330 acres we were combining. In 2025, that will be 120 acres. So 210 acres less. The amount of food I'm going to produce is one third of what it was only two three years ago because the government have launched these schemes and if i look again at the food strategy document i can see that's what led the government to introduce these things because they want us to have a higher fiber diet they want to reduce uh, meat by 30 percent and they want to um, stop us grazing the highlands and use that for carbon capture rather than extensive food production Ah, so that is why they've gone for this greening and I'm going to get improved soil structure if I'm doing this. So long term, the soil structure on our farm will benefit from me entering these schemes and the legume mixes every we're doing and they're replacing break crops. But it also means as a country, we're going to produce less food than we were. And when this document was written, I don't think they took into account also the rise in the population in the UK. It is incredible how quickly the population rises. The UK population between 1996 and 2021 went up 8.9 million. That's 15% rise, about 67, 68 million. If you go forward, the number now for 2036, 
73.7 million people. It's rising at an alarming rate. And we have to feed all these people. And all this land coming out of production and going into these environmental schemes means there's less land being farmed. And I think we're heading, well, by 2027, when these schemes, everybody sign up to these schemes and the reality hits, we might even hit it in 2025. But there was an awful lot less food being grown in the UK. And there's nothing in this document that even touches on a rising population. How are we going to feed a rising population? They are assuming in the document that we are going to move away from meat and eat meat replacement products. They do admit they're more expensive. But if you look in 2024, three years after this report was written, veganism and synthetic meats has not been a good business to be in because the cost of uh, living has risen. People are looking at their budgets more tightly and they're not pay willing to pay the extra for that type of food. So we're, we're back to basics is what's rising. If you look at, oh, um, well, all meat prices have risen dramatically in 2024. That's where the demand is. And this wheat is all grown to feed chickens, chicken feed, it's feed wheat. And that is a very quick way of growing meat. So therefore the carbon impact is lessened because they are incredibly efficient with the breeding in chickens to when they get to a, a killing weight. If I look at the price of chicken now from what it was, chicken costs a third of what it did in 1970. Isn't that mad? That's 54 years and chicken is one third of the price it was in 1970. So basically food prices broadly fallen 25% since the nineteen seventies. since the 1970s. We've got used to cheap food in the UK and that is partly um, driven a bad diet, weirdly, in the report. They want to see a reduction in processed food and they also want to see less food waste, which is all admirable, but I just don't think they've taken account of how quickly it changes the amount of land coming out of food production here in the UK. You know, I'm, I'm growing one third of um, what we did next year. My other neighbour was one farmer who's got 100% out, another one's at 80% reduction, and the, the guy who does all the spraying here, he's about a 30% reduction next year. Dramatic changes right at the time when the population is going up. Basically, land is always being taken away for growing crops because of the rise of population, going for housing, it's going for infrastructure, and there is um, a, a rush uh, in Wales and Scotland, there are institutions buying up land to plant trees for carbon capture and carbon trading. So your pool of land to produce this rising population is shrinking all the time. And another bit that's not mentioned in the food strategy is two million tonnes of wheat in the UK a year goes to making ethanol to put in our fuel. So you know when fuel went from E5 to E10, well that gobbled up more land, more production of wheat to go into ethanol production. There is a byproduct from ethanol production that then goes, feeds chickens, pigs, and etc. I don't want to go into massive detail on a, a monologue, but I'm going to put a link to the food strategy document in the de video description below. Be very interested if any of you would click down and have a read through it because I just can't see it's going to be possible. The, when the, the mass population is not on this journey. And we're seeing a little bit of fight back already. We've seen the slowing of EV adoption. We've seen Scotland have to backtrack on where they were heading with their net zero plans. And all round there's unrest because this is happening almost too fast for the population. We're not changing our diet quick enough. We're not sure this is really worthwhile. And I, I come back to the point on the whole thing, this has to be a global call to action. It's no good the UK and a, a bit of Europe saying, yeah, we're going to do all this and we're going to reduce our food and we're going to uh, carbon capture if the rest of the world isn't carrying, doing it as well. So I think that's the main one. Big, big subject. Um, so I'm going to leave it there for the time being. I might do an update depending on how much comments this video gets. But yeah, farm looking good. Weather's settled down. Lots of activity on farm. 
and um, yeah I've got some reasonable looking wheats I can take to another part of the farm where it's all flooded and flooded damaged but I'm trying to keep away from those keep my spirits up and look at this scene here with the cows here everything growing so there we are hope you enjoyed this Harry's farm if you did well keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming on very soon yeah, cows have pushed off they got bored of that